if HTML is the bread and CSS is the butter, J J JavaScript's what you put in the bread and butter to make it not just taste like a bread and butter sandwich. Welcome back to another video. My name is Jeremiah Peoples. I am a self-taught software engineer and by far the most question I get asked is how long did it take you to become a software engineer and how do you do it? So in this video, I'm gonna be covering how to become a software developer in 2020 for 2021. Now there's a lot of different types of development. There's front-end coders, there's back-end developers, there's full stack developers, data scientists, but in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to become a front-end engineer in 2021. Now, if you don't already know what the difference between front-end and back-end web development is, let me break it down for you. So take an application like Facebook, facebook.com, shout out Zuck. After you log in Facebook and you're seeing a timeline, you're seeing what your friends are posting, you're seeing a bunch of things happening, and that stuff is all front-end. Everything that you can interact with, a front-end engineer has developed. Well, you may be asking yourself, well, that's all the application is. It's a bunch of buttons I can click. But there's another realm that's kind of hidden. It's like the shadow realm. And that's the back end. The back end houses your data, your passwords, your friend list, how many likes you have. It houses a lot of raw data and a bunch of other stuff that we're not going to get into in this video because this is the front end stuff. This is the one we all care about. Front end forever. Hashtag front end our dice on. To get started in front end web development, you're going to need to learn three languages. There's no way around it. You got to know these three languages and that's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML, hypertext markup language, is not super sexy of a language. If you apply for Facebook or Google and you make it to a coding interview, they're not going to ask you to code up some HTML real quick because it's, it's not the most robust language. It's a markup language. This is the language that your buddies took in high school and they like to relate to you by saying, well actually I did do a bit of a HTML in high school so I get it. Cool. Real short and sweet, HTML is used to tell your web page what types of things you want. Hey, I want a button over here that fires this function on a click, and I want an input over here where I can type in text and tell my friend Sally that they're my favorite friend in the world. That's HTML. The language you're probably gonna learn right alongside of HTML is CSS, Cascading Style Sheet. CSS is what makes web pages incredibly beautiful and don't sleep on CSS. A good quality styled web page is the difference between retaining your users and having them vomit in their mouth when they see their web page and run for the hills crying because it's so ugly. For some reason, CSS is an overlooked skill when it comes to web development, but it definitely comes in handy. If you wanna be a great front end web developer, you need to have a great understanding of Cascading Style Sheet. You gotta, you just gotta do it. If HTML is the bread, then CSS is the butter. When you start to develop your first couple of applications, you wanna make sure that your theme of your application is unified, meaning that all your button types look the same, your forms look the same, so that people get a unified feel of your application that's not all over the place. And key concepts that you're gonna wanna learn and understand before moving on to JavaScript are CSS Grid, Flexbox, I recommend Flexbox Froggy that helped me tons. And maybe start to look ahead and look into maybe Bootstrap or Material Live. Those are libraries to help you keep your content appropriately sized for all different devices of all different sizes like handheld, tablet, laptop, desktop, and so forth. And lastly, the fun part, JavaScript, learn it. If HTML is the bread and CSS is the butter, j j JavaScript's what you put in the bread and butter to make it not just taste like a bread and butter sandwich. JavaScript is literally the beating heart of all front-end web applications. You can make a nice front-end web application with just HTML and CSS, but it's most likely gonna be pretty static, meaning it's not gonna do much. It's just gonna be there, like a menu for a restaurant. Learning JavaScript is probably, most likely, definitely, gonna be the most challenging between the CSS and HTML that you've been working on previously. I've been a software engineer for a little bit over a year, and I still study JavaScript day in and day out. Like there's always so much more you can do with JavaScript and so many things outside of the box you can accomplish. Okay, so let's pretend it's been a couple of weeks and you've been working on JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, and you made a couple small projects and you're feeling pretty confident. I think now you're ready for the big dogs, ready for the big lead to take it up to a framework or a library. Hi, welcome to web development. If you're new here, you probably don't know that Frameworks and libraries of JavaScript are the sexiest thing in web development. Yeah, I said it's sexy in development. Don't don't get on me. Everyone's probably gonna be pushing you to learn a framework or library like React or Angular. Uh, again, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a strong understanding of the fundamentals. Understand those fundamentals through projects, making applications with just vanilla JS. As of 
today. As I'm making this, React.js is probably the top dog of the JavaScript library framework, whatever you want to call it. But whenever you're watching this video, make sure to do your own research and to double check and make sure that the framework or library that you're choosing is still popular because things change so often in the development community. That's why I don't do books. By the time you get your book back home, you open it up, you crack it open, you sniff it, it it's outdated, it's deprecated, and it's changed. Again, make sure you're checking online to see the framework or library that you want to get into is still in demand. And that's it. That's the video. That's what you need to do to become a front-end web developer in 2021. HTML and CSS, get those in. Eh. Spend a little time on those and then really hunker down on vanilla JS and then move to a framework of your choosing. React JS is the best JS. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate that. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow me on my web development journey. And like always, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.